Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA The Internet's most passionate wine program. And we have a really interesting guest here today, especially for me as an entrepreneur, you know, business kind of guy. Uh, this could be a very fascinating episode. The gentleman we have here is, you know, at least from the way I look at the wine world, pretty legendary guy. He's pulled off a, a pretty, Interesting career, and I, I think you know he could tell a lot better. So, Bryce, thank you so much for being on the show. Pleasure. Gary. I really appreciate it. Why don't you tell the Vayner Nation a little bit about yourself, how you got into the wine industry, what you did? I think a lot of them will be familiar with some of the names we're gonna uh, throw around in a minute. All right. Uh, I was a kid in the Air Force, flying uh, hot airplanes, and uh, as it says somewhere, eventually I had to grow up and put away my childish things, my toys. Understood. <laughs> got out, went to business school, and. Uh, Nobody was paying me for my superior ability to uh, shoot down a MiG-21, so uh, I said, well, if I'm gonna work for free, might as well work for myself. So uh, with that, I uh, shook hands with a fellow in New York on uh, 57th and Lexington, as I recall, about three in the afternoon, and uh, he said, you go to California and line it all up and I'll help raise your money in New York. In those days, we had a thing called tax shelters. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you what, I could lose money with the best of them. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> I'd lost some more money than they imagined. And what year was this? That was 72. So this is 1972, and you had the idea to go to California and start a wine business? Yep. Well, where, you know, or, or take me back a step, okay? Okay. okay. Where, where did that crazy thing well, come from? Well, um, actually, to tell you the truth, which is what I'm here to do. Yeah, that's how we roll. Nation. That's right. Uh, on my second tour in Vietnam, I was working for a uh, red-hot fighter pilot general who was, compared to everybody else, a wine buff. I think because he'd been shot down in France. <laughs> <laughs> Landed in the vineyard and yeah, started really. drinking. He <laughs> worked his way through Burgundy. So uh, one day he said to me in his trailer, he says, uh, you know, Lieutenant, that Burgundy's the name of a place? I said, no way, General, don't hand me that. It's a brand of Paul Masson. That's right. Yeah, it's a true story. That's awesome. So he said, well, you read up on it and study up. So, of course, once you start this stuff, you know you're Yeah, hooked. you get sucked right in. You know well. So. I know very well. So you started reading. So I started reading. and uh, one There thing in I, Vietnam, you found some books? You found anything? No, I had, to, I had to wait and get back. But okay. uh, when I got back, I did. And, and then I started going to uh, Christie's and buying auction, uh, buying wine at auction at Christie's and London. So, so you got pretty into it pretty quickly. I did before I even got out of the Air Force. Yeah, very neat. And uh, in fact, I sort of got out of the Air Force thinking I would start something like this, but after I got in business school and realized what a bad idea that was. How bad the wine business really, was. How to make a small fortune. Right. That uh, I said, well, no, I'll get a job. Well, you, you know, the jobs were. I, I was older than my classmates, having been in the military. Sure seven, eight years, and I just wasn't getting uh, paid for my superior ability to shoot down here. <laughs> I love that. You need to turn that into a t-shirt. Don't you think? I think so. I think we got a business here, you know, I can feel us riffing an entrepreneurial yeah. venture right here, right now. So with my partner uh, behind me, I went out and lined up the land. And uh, and his partner was from Military Connection? No, no, he, he was from a school? business school connection. Mm -hmm. Got it. Well, uh, in those days, in those days, in 1972, I was looking for good vineyard land, and that meant bottom land warm climate or right. Napa Valley because all farmers in the world almost all of them sell their product and even today 80 percent of the wines produced in California are made from purchased grapes yeah it's something a lot of people don't realize really purchased grapes now if you're going to be the farmer and that's all I could raise money for is the farming side not the wine side there was no in those days no tax shelter in the winery so in order to do, to do that I uh, said well I, everybody that sells product wants the bottom land and historically in Europe, the high cash value crop is on the valley bottom. The less valuable crop, the grapes go up the side, and above that were the olives. So in California, that was no different, except the high value crop was the grapes. So I'm looking for bottom land in a warm climate to ripen up Cabernet, which two thirds of the country was drinking red wine in those days. Well, all the good land was gone. And I was. Those heights and those kind of characters. They were in all, and up, right? They were. Even in Sonoma, Dry Creek, Alexander Valley, it was all gone. Could have gone to Monterey, could have gone to Lake County. I didn't have that much guts. But I. Uh, People still don't have that much guts these days. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm not, I mean, I'm not going there. Yeah, well, so, I'm not picking on it. I love Lake I County, something like that. But, right? I mean, it still yeah. is, a, as a branding business venture, a tough place to it go to. It is do a business. very tough to, mm -hmm. to sell wine out of Mendocino, even yep. Monterey. 
So uh, with that, I found land in the lower reach of the Russian River Valley on rolling hillsides. And all the Italianos and Sonoma said, don't buy that land, Bryce, those grapes are never going to sugar up. Well, Zinfandel and Cabernet don't sugar up down there. So since I wanted to come out of this with my shirt, I went up to Davis, tried to figure out what kind of grape to plant. Imagine my disparagement to see that I should be planting white grapes and then they should be Chardonnay. Hell, I didn't even know what a Chardonnay was in 1973. And I knew what a white burgundy was. I didn't know they made them out of Chardonnay. Right. So I planted Chardonnay because I had scared that's, stiff. That's, that's scared the, the teachers told you that, you know, yeah. the academia told yeah. you that's what you needed to plant. And I even ran a thermostat down there one season. I found out it was even below region one, too cold. And I said, I put that in the ground. Don't ever show that to anybody. Hoping they might not even come out. Yeah. Crazy. Well, Gary, I remember the day the white wine boom hit. It was in 1976. I'm sitting in my little farm office, and Dick Arrowwood called me up from Chateau St. Jean. He says, Bryce, you got any Chardonnay for sale over there? Why, yes, I do, Dick. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, I do. He says, I'll give you 600 a ton for all you got. I said, wow, my ship has come in. <laughs> because we, Lotto. Ran, we ran our cash flow out at 450 a ton. He's offering me 600 for all I got. Wow. Did oh. your business sense come in and say, wait a minute? No. I <laughs> no, said, you said I 600. Said, let's I go. Said, let's go. Let's go. Well, the problem is I wasn't on bottom land. I wasn't getting the yields to right. quite get that ship in the harbor. But Got still, it. we were doing pretty well. In fact, by 1980, we were in danger of turning a profit. <laughs> so <laughs> The guy in New York was pretty happy with you. Well, we did a lot of tax shelter, Gary. I understand. I like that. I so, wish we still had those kind of things. I know, I know. So he says, well, what are we going to do with this profit? I said, let's do the winery. By then, winery was getting so sexy in America that they... His 35 partners that he had said, yeah, yeah, let's have a winery. Sure. So the romance, so, right? Yeah. Sure. So we started Sonoma Cadrera and uh, built her from scratch, and that's the story of how that got there. Well, uh, when I went back to my 25th business school reunion, uh, they put me on an entrepreneur's panel, and the class unanimously awarded me for 17 years until break even, the Long Suffering Award. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. So, so that, here I sit, the long suffering. So that, that's what it was, 17 years. 17 years to break even. So by 1990, we were making some cash flow, and the partners had been in you know, 25 years or so, and they said, how are we getting out of this? When do we get some money back? Money back? What a concept. <laughs> so anyway, long story short, I had to sell Sonoma Kitera. I had it by then 135. The 35 had gotten divorced and died and all that stuff. So sure. I had 135 partners and a lot of them wanted That was a lot back. to uh, juggle. It was a lot, so I had to do something. So ground foreman came along? Well, I had to either go public or sell it, and I kind of courted ground foreman for a while. And uh, they stepped to the plate in every regard. <laughs> that was a big That was big news. That was one of the first, you know, yeah. you know, for me, you know, you know, now you're around the timing when I was starting to read and get into the wine business, and the sale of Sonoma Contreras to, to Brown Foreman, that was big news. It, it was, was a big, big number, too. It was a big number. It was a big number. And I was like, paid. wait a minute. There might be some money in this wine business. They, they paid in U.S. greenbacks. But, uh, you know, I went down there on while we were in the When was the sale completed? 99. And then at 99, I went down before the deal was completed. And I'd heard they were worried I wasn't going to be a team player. Right. So uh, they had me in the. By knowing you for a couple minutes, I can see where that maybe <laughs> yeah. became an issue. Went, I, they had me at lunch in the banquet room, in the yeah. executive room, and I'm sitting across from the president of the company, Owsley Brown. And halfway through the meal, I said, Owsley, I know you guys are worried I might not be a team player, but you know, I was a member of the biggest team in the world for 13 years, the U.S. Air Force. I said, but I was a fighter pilot. <laughs> Everybody, everybody jumped. And, yeah, they did. And, and a couple of my friends said, "He should have listened to you then." <laughs> because after two years, they fired me. Yeah, they did. I had a five-year contract. They couldn't <laughs> take it. They couldn't take it. After five years, they fired me. And I, everybody wondered what took them so long. Right. That was about two years too late. Yeah, I gave them a reason every week. Every week they had a reason. So uh, they canned me. <laughs> and, right. at that, and at that time, I had already bought the land for this with their permission. And, uh, and they fired a bunch of other guys with me that were, they thought were too loyal to me. A bunch of other guys quit within a few months. And I said to all of them, come on over. We're starting Pinot Noir. And since we have about... What you, did you have a knock? You couldn't really get into the they waved business? It. They waved it. Uh, when I bought this land, they waved it. Really? Because the deal wasn't quite inked, you know. Yeah. It's sign right here. Yeah. I like that. So um, out of uh, 40 employees we've got now, about 33 came from Sonoma Couture. You have 40 employees for this brand. Yeah, and that's what, well, that we own 50, 150 acres of it. Well, that's right, right. So there's other things going on. Right, right. 30 in the vineyard. So uh, 
33 of them came from Sonoma Couture, and uh, that's why we call it Emeritus. We've all been together 25 years. I like that. That's nice. Right, right. That's a great story. Yeah. Thank and you. so what was the first public vintage of the We Emeritus? only make Pinot Noir. Right. This one only goes to restaurants. Right. In 10 states. This so one we're only... very lucky to have this here. Yes, sir. Though it's a little cold. Well, it's a little, but we like it a little cold. But let's tell the story. Okay. Understand one thing. We're going to review these wines, but... It's gonna be a little tougher than normal. One, I, as you can tell, he's much tougher than me, so I'll probably rate it higher. Two, they're cold. They're really kind of cold. Yeah, they're probably uh, 55. You know, or 45. But no, no probably 55. Yeah, but they, they're, they're cold. But um, so this is in 10 states, restaurant only. Restaurant only. Okay, and that's the the uh, emeritus. That's the Russian, Russian River, River Valley. Valley. Okay, and then over here, the uh, William Wellesley. William Wesley was Wesley, my dad. Future was my mom. Very cool. So this is my dad, William Wesley, only to mailing list. Mailing list only. And how big is your mailing list? Right now it's 1,800 people. And how much do you make? We make uh, the vintage that's coming out now, 07, we've got about uh, 500 cases. Oh, small. Of the mailing list one. Yeah, I understand. 7,000 cases of this. Are you thinking about taking that to retail? No. Here's why, Gary. I know you're a retailer and you're a good man. If I give it to anyone, I give it to you. Well, I appreciate that. And maybe we will one day. Maybe we will. Mott. <laughs> so here's why. You hate retailers. I know. No, I, know. I don't. I'm with no. you. I'm with you. I'm with I, do, you. I, I, I don't. I don't. I, I like some retailers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like them. Michael Aaron's a great friend of mine. He's a really good dude. He's a good friend of mine. Yeah. I knew his dad. Sam? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sherry well, Lehman's. Look, um, this wine is priced on the mail list of $50. This is also a $50 wine. But if I priced it at that, for retail, the restaurants wouldn't be able to sell it. I understand. So, so in Burgundy, for example, wines are priced in Burgundy where they are on the hillside. Right. Relative. Sure. In California, wine, Pinot Noir especially is priced by the wine, by the proprietor's ego. Absolutely, and the press that supports the it. press that supports right. It. Yes, and that's the game. Yes. So, I would have priced this wine quite a bit higher. Four, five thousand dollars. At least. What I'm seeing yeah, here. I know. <laughs> So uh, I would have priced it higher, but my oh, sales... I don't even want to know what I would but, price things for. Like my sales guy, Gary, is, well, you're going to love him. Maybe you've met this guy, Fred Reno. He says, uh, we're going to price this wine to sell. Right. I said, well, what a concept. <laughs> Some bull crap. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of concept is you're this? You're like, I got 18 years here to break even. What's the problem? <laughs> I know, I know. It's been 10 already for me. <laughs> I'm still not there. We lose money on every bottle of this we sell. Does that make you feel good or bad? No, it makes me feel we got to get our act together. Okay. And uh, how, what's the game plan with that? This one is going to go to restaurants only. Yep. But we've got to get it up to about ten or eleven thousand cases. Got it. We've and got plenty of grapes. I sell as many grapes as I produce. Who are some of the people that you can say that you sell to, or can you? Or well, in restaurants all? in New York. No, I mean grapes. Oh, grapes. Or are they all under Sure, no, 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 I can no, tell you. No, we no. sell the summer. Yes, yeah, summer uh, knows. I know how that uh, is. Paul Meyer, Beckstoffer, Radio Coteau, Shearer. Uh, some, serious, Goldfield. some serious players. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Some good wine makers. Excellent guys. Yeah, excellent guys. And do uh, you screen them personality-wise before you're willing to sell them grapes? <laughs> or no? You just they say, screen they, me. They, <laughs> they, that's, you know what? That's true. Actually, I know. It's true. Uh, All right, let's zoom in on the first wine. Let's get a little focused here. Um, this is the 07 Russian River Pinot. Emeritus Vineyards. Com. Mott, let's link it up. We're sending wine. Wine lists. Uh, let's see if we this can should be about, This list. should be about. Will you commit to any Vaniac that signs up for the wine list that when they order and they mention that they're a Vaniac, they can get a T-shirt that says, "I'm underappreciated for my skills to knocking down." What are those? I, I, I will. I will. We do need that. to make a custom yes, T-shirt. Yes, that. we will do that. Okay. Yep. They got to identify that themselves. All right. Let's sniffy sniff it up. All right. Oh my God! I'm in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Right in heaven, right? <laughs> no, but it, it is actually pretty strong aromatic. Let me say something about this wine before you taste it, may I? Yes, sir. Our, one of the guys that did not come from Sonoma Couture was the winemaker because the winemaker is still there. He never made red wine. He's only a Chardonnay guy. The winemaker I got was an American, but he got his degree in Dijon in Burgundy and mm -hmm. worked for 10 years in Burgundy. What did he work in? Well, uh, let uh, Lafont, uh, a couple of others... Uh, Albert de Valen for a while. Oh, yeah. Like was a, anyway, so... Uh, I knew you were going to go somewhere. Now. So, look, the French... I, I go to Burgundy every year to, to get wood from my trees. Yep. Uh, trees from my barrels. <laughs> Understood. Trees from my barrels. 
And I've learned a lot from the French. And I'm not saying they make better wine or have anything we don't, but I'll tell you what, after 1,300 years of making pretty good wine, we should pay attention to some of their habits. I think that's fair. Okay. We Absolutely. Should, we need to pay attention. I think it's like the young generation now, right? They need to pay attention to their older. You know, Especially. Kind of, their elders. I think there's a lot to be learned. I think that, you know, us punk kids, we, we think we know everything. Well, I think there's a lot to be learned from history and definitely the people that have been in the trenches. We, we need to weigh the balance here. There's, yeah. there's, and you need to learn about Twitter. What's your thoughts on Twitter? Um... I think it's kind of electronic stalking. Yeah, and freaks you out. I don't, I'll do it. I'm. I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. You're still on the on the flip. My, your What's friend, your intuition? My intuition is that I might have somebody do it with me. Fair, good. I'm okay. glad you didn't say for you. Okay, that was no, very we, smart. Because no, I was about to razz no, you hard. No, no, I, I'm. I'm not against it. I'm. I'm just. It's good for people that like it, and then I'm not satisfied yet. Understood. But I might do it with somebody. Good. Uh, okay, so one of the things that the French National Director of Taste taught me. Now, don't you think we need one of those, Gary? In fact, yes, it's going to be you. No, I'm, I'm actually, you. I'm already it's thinking, you. I'm plotting. I'm like, we may start a, a, yeah. a battle cry here. <laughs> That's right, the that yeah. American I Director like of Taste, Vaynerchuk. It smells like, you know, pig fart. Oh, yeah, okay. big billboards. So one of the things he said, first first thing I remember he told me is that I remembered distinctly is, 80% of your impression of a wine is formed at the time you see it and hear it poured into the glass. Now, I don't know about hearing, wow. but seeing. I watched you on the other day pour a wine, and the minute you poured it in the glass, I said, he's going he's gonna to pan this wine, and you did. Interesting. Yeah. That's Try it yourself next time. Um, I'm, I'm like, I'm massive. Okay. So the next thing he said is, okay, wine has three main components, soil, uh, soil climate, and man. And they're like three legs of a stool. And they got to be pretty much in balance, although man is the most important of the three. So man is the most important? Yes, is what is. he said? Okay. Yes, because you, you, man can screw you it can, up. You can manipulate the other two. That's right. Hmm. Soil it's gives the wine its character. Now, the way I think about that is if you come from a family of ten kids, you've all got similar character because you have the same roots. DNA. Right. Soil gives the wine its character. Climate gives it its personality. Right. So those ten the kids have all got different. Grew up yeah, in. that's right. I like that. Man, they say, he said, Jacques Puget said, man gives it its spirit. Now, I, I thought and thought, what does that mean? Well, first of all, translated as esprit helps a little bit. But I think the translation better is style. So the reason I'm boring you with this, Gary, No, is I mean, that, you're not boring me at all, okay, actually. The winemaker, thank you, came from Burgundy, trained in Burgundy, learned to make Pinot in Burgundy. So when you taste this wine, I'm going to tell you, it's not what you're going to be expecting to be knocked over and blown down with a big, blousy, Russian River Pinot Noir. It's, uh, it's the wine is has got the style, not the character, not the personality, but the style. I think of Burgundy. This is very interesting. No. I think that's a really, you know, because you know, a lot, some of our who is it? SS Chris or Brandon M made a comment the other day when I said this is Burgundian, and it's a pro. One of the fans yeah. said, "Can we get enough bull crap with the Burgundian?" But that's you know, that's how I, I articulate it. It's got that, you know. Burgundian, and, and I, I, it's never been the terroir, it's probably been the style all along. I think it's the style, and, and uh, this, when, when we go to Burgundy and we taste Don's wine with Aubert and all these guys, they, sure. they, 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 I know you talk about the sock and the yep. horse and all this, mm -hmm. what they talk about, French don't really knock wines, they talk about the charm, the elegance, and Especially the balance. Especially French that are selling. The that's wine. right, that's right. It's a different kind, it's an early drinking vintage, of course. But they talk about the, st the style, the, the elegance, the charm, and the balance. So this is not going to knock you down, Gary, but I think you'll find that this is exactly what the winemaker is trying to do. Yeah, and you know, I, I mean, I don't know how much you watch or, or you have a feel, but I'm not looking for Pinot to knock me down. I'm good, not, I'm not you know, one of the things that I yell about on Wine Library TV constantly, and sometimes I'll say it even on the show, I am convinced this wine is blended with Syrah because uh, I get so upset when Pinot starts trying to act like Syrah. Right. Part of that is we haven't, you know, Pinot, good Pinot Noir in California is only 10 or 15 years old. There is not I agree with you. a given template for what Pinot should taste like. I mean, <laughs> except this one, of course. But isn't that a good thing too, though? It's good to have. I think it's good to have a good solid center. But it's fun yes. to have people on the edges always yeah. trying to move that center yeah, a little bit. It's fine right? by me. It's fine by me. It's fine. I just, I personally am not a fan of the Syrah type Pinots or the Beaujolais type. So. You know, actually, it's not. It's, it's warming down, so we can actually taste it a little bit, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, I like the cherry fruit. Excuse me, the strawberry fruit that initially hits my palate. 
you're right, it's not over the top in any stretch of the imagination, which is a great thing, as um, a lot of people know I feel uh, about Pino. It's also very clean. You know, I, you. that to yep. me is, is the big standout from this. I like the finish. I feel the heat a little bit. You know, just a hair on the back end. It's 14%. Yeah, so do you feel a little bit of heat on the back well, end? Well, I think... You're a little bit tougher than I am. Uh, I so think... You probably just... Let it you probably go. ate the heat and punched no, no, it in the No, 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 no. Well, you said let, heat? Let, back up. Bryce is let, here. Let it sit down there. Okay, let okay. it sit for a little okay. bit. And taste it again when it warms up. I got pumped there for Part of it is it's cold. Now, 07, this vintage, is the best vintage I believe I've ever seen in California, and I've seen a few. But you said that in 04, no, in 01, no, no, I didn't, no, 94. I didn't. Not the best I've ever seen, no. But it might have been at the time. You didn't no, know 07 no, was coming. No, I never said I've never said You've that. never said that before. I promise. I'm I will again. go through the history you of will. all your quotes, you and you've never said this is the I best I've never said that. I've never said it. But you said it so nonchalantly here. I think because I'm used to saying it that. to the guys I sell the wine to. I understand. But it is. It is the best vintage I believe I've ever seen. Interesting. And I've seen them. Better than 94. Yes. 94 Pinot is a really interesting wine. So it was 81, so it was 92, so it was 82 was bad, not bad. Uh, 74, I would have said... I was negative minute. one in 74. Okay, well, 74, so I still drink the Cabernets from uh, Sterling and Heights and those guys. Well, that vintage is insane. Yeah. I mean, you know, but this the is as good as, is, this like, is as good as the 74. You think the 07s? Yes. Wow. Yeah, listen, the hype is insane, right? I mean, like, everybody... And Napa is chirping quietly. The underlining hype is that 07. Well, those guys need to. Well, you, you know what? They're they, in a whole, they're you in a you whole ask thing. a guy in Napa, what's the best vintage you ever made? Why? The one I currently have for sale. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that, that's what you're doing right now with your 07. No, this is an 06. <laughs> that's true. No, it, but this, this is. Uh... I got to tell you, I like this wine. I like its polish. It, it, it You know, the only thing that is not bothering me with the wine. The only thing that stands out from conceivably something that people will be affected with is a little heat on the back end, but even by the second sip yeah, here, it's, it's kind of molding away. Warm. It's got to warm um, up a little bit. The fruit is good. The polish is good. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. I think right, it's a good wine. You. All right, thank let's you. move on. Let's see what the All other right. one is. So okay. why don't you give the Vaniacs while we rinse here a little bit an interesting your your most interesting wine story that you can think of something something hilarious they're they're a comedic kind of bunch. <laughs> well, I don't know if I got hilarious. Have you ever seen like when you did a wine dinner like the lady threw up on the guy and then oh, he slipped and the waiter time. tripped and all then the, the food landed on your face <laughs> anything like that the same? No, but I'll I'll tell you well I'll tell you this it's not hilarious but I will I was being interviewed once by a, a woman from an Australian wine magazine. This is not hilarious. I'm just giving you a story. Yeah, story. She says, uh, when you're having guests for dinner, how do you decide which wine to serve? Well, by who's coming to dinner, of course. And she throws her pen. Damn, so do I. Is that, is that right? Yeah. So you've been in the wine business 30 years and that's the best story you gave me? Well, I, I'll tell you, I have a better one. I was <laughs> Thank gonna, you. I was going to say this, this is, for the yeah. question of the day. Oh, you, Can I give you the question of the day now? No, but I'm very oh. impressed and I appreciate you being on point. You are okay. clearly prepared. Somebody behind the scenes has had you very No, impressed. no, they didn't. All no. right, I'm impressed. No, you're, You've been really chomping to do the question of the day. Yeah. Huh? Well, then let's get through this wine. We can do that. All right. So named after your pops. Yeah. That's pretty cool. My dear dad. That's really nice. Yeah. You guys were close? Not close enough. Yeah. You know, and I, I regret that I wasn't. Yeah, did he uh, did he pass when you were young? No, he passed about uh, five years ago. Not that long. How no. old was he? Yeah, he was ninety two. But you didn't feel you guys weren't. Uh, we were close, you know. In my youth, I was very very close. But as I went off and did my own thing, I got self important, you know. And, yeah. And uh, doing things that I thought he didn't get. wouldn't understand, yeah. And, and uh, I loved him, you know, and he loved me, he adored me. But uh, I wish I'd spent more time with him. Where did he live? Sacramento. Sacramento. Was he a Kings fan? <laughs> trying to line it up here. No. <laughs> no? No. Thank God. <laughs> no, we don't watch basketball. Did you grow up liking sports? I grew up playing all the sports, but I, I'll play them, but I don't watch them enough. Never followed them? I followed baseball a little bit. And who did you, who's your team? Well, it's, I, I go to the Giants games. I don't like much the Giants, but I love the A's, but I don't go to their games. It's an ironic thing. The Giants have a great stadium. Yeah, they it's do. It's a lot It's of fun. beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. All right, let's sniff right. this up. This is a reserve. Oh, Ma, thank you so much. This Ma, is the point. reserve wine. It's the consumers 06. only. Got it. And we're out of this wine. The 07's coming out right after Labor Day. 
Who who are mainly the people? Where do you feel you got your biggest push to the mailing list? Word of mouth, kind of. Did you get a big rating or write up early on that probably uh, pushed the majority? In of the, the list? beginning, Lauby gave this wine a uh, ninety four or ninety five, and just, that was a big. Yeah, push. We just got a ninety five from Wine News. Very nice. So uh, you know that helps. But um, I, I what we're getting a lot of is repeat customers. People drink it. Yeah, and they're like drinking. It. We re released the wine, and we had a, we were sold out in two hours. This is really good wine. This is really exceptional. Um, a great mix of earthy soilness. I also get like a beef jerky component there on the, on the finish, almost like a, a cherry beef jerky. What do you think about well, that? I, I, I think that's. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that? Well, okay. <laughs> what, what are you picking up on 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 the palate? Charm. Charm. Well, that, that's good. I think this whole show is loaded with enormous amounts of charm. It normally has obnoxious amounts. The American just, director of taste you know, here. That's right. Beef jerky with strawberry cherries. Right. Um, no, but there's this really interesting gaminess. Um, there is that. There is that. Which always kind that? of pushes me to like venison jerky. Well, I just, I, my mind always in palate the, goes it's that. It's the power direction. of suggestion. I see what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what happens? You think when I say people, you know, this tastes like pickles, and they drink it? Oh my god! Oh my god! It does. It's a suggestion play. <laughs> Guy goes and runs and gets a jar of pickles. Yeah, I hear I you. Saw that. No, this is this has a really classic nose and and a really good earthiness. I mean, this really is a, a little bit. You know what? It, it does have. You know, it's funny you say charm. Ma's probably laughing because I often talk talk about wines having charisma. Well, I'll be darned. I, I use that oh. adjective quite a bit. Oh. We'll re rewind some episodes for you. You'll be very impressed. You don't see a lot of people using that. No, I don't. And so you're Never proud of me, right, Bryce? Uh, yes, I am. How proud? I'm really. I think you're director of taste. <laughs> well, I hear you. So, yeah, I, you know, I think this wine has a, a lot of uh, great characters to it. Oh, thanks. Thank you. you like this? I uh, love it. <laughs> Have you ever made a wine you didn't love? Yeah. Which one? 89 Vintage. You wish you kind of just... Uh, we, we wish that we could, didn't have it. We declassified one of them, sold it as bulk. Now, Snow Betrayer was a very controversial brand. It seems like you're going down not too different of a road with this. I remember my dad wanting to punch salespeople in the face. I, I, know, I, know. Um, I remember being very mad at you. I know. I really disliked you. I know. And the brand because people would come in, they wanted it, and we couldn't even get the Russian River standard. I mean, or we get like three cases, and then I had to fight with Leonardo I to, know. to get like a couple more boxes, and I was like, this is the dumbest stuff. I I've, know. You know, I saved myself there. Yeah. You know, um, you know, go. I was like, you know, that's you know, actually, you know, you want to hear something interesting. Yeah. I actually will give Sonoma Cotrer credit for some of my business success because early on I learned from emotion and thought and bigger picture thinking. I told my dad, because he would get very emotional about the brand and so would all retailers, I said, screw them. It's like, screw Sonoma Cotrer. If we can't get it, let's build another brand that means something. That's and right. so that's what I focused on and people come in and say, do you have Sonoma Cotrer? I'm like, you don't want that horrible wine. Let me show you something way better. That's the most overrated wine in the history I, I, of time. I, I knew that was happening. Yeah. And, and we deserved to get that. Well, no, you didn't. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you, you played it wrong. I mean, listen, no. I was from afar. I mean, I never got emotional about it. I was like, that's a smart play. That's how they decided to build their brand. It's working for them. Yeah. Creating that, uh, you know, exclusivity is always a good way to yeah. go to consumers. I thought it was smart, but I wasn't going to be emotional or hurt my business in a little bit, I was going to build off of it. Absolutely. Well, you can, you, know? buy it. you can buy all you want now. <laughs> that I know. <laughs> and by the way, you can buy all you want of most brands. I know. Those, yeah. The allocation days almost are... Almost whatever price you name. You, it's really gotten interesting. It really. Tell me a little bit about it. Was that really conscious? Did you really go for You, you really brought out all your marketing savvy there and decided to create that exclusivity, let them well, taste it at a great restaurant, go and try to find it, can't get it, create well, this you, enormous they could emotion. Get it. They could get it. They could get in it. Pockets, they could get right? it. They could get it at Sherry Lehman. They could right. get it at K&L. They right. could get it at Wally's in L.A. There's a couple partners in crime. Marty's. In yeah, they, I wasn't cool enough at the time yet well, we to be a partner. we didn't know you then. I understand. I understand. You were minus one. When we yeah, started. so I understand. <laughs> so, and, and that's how you... That, so yeah, you some because restaurants regional? build your brands. Right. Do you still believe that now? They build it, Gary. Now, retailers... Because I would argue that in today's world of information and people, you know, with all the internet right. stuff that goes on and, and cons the way consumers interact okay. now, that... Restaurants who are so behind the game on technology and oh, storytelling. Absolutely. I mean, staggeringly absolutely. behind that to the younger generation, to a lot of the guys watching right now, I'll tell you right now, I promise you, restaurants are not building this brand for you. 
Okay, we'll, we'll talk after this. We're gonna have a good business debate. We'll talk. You can see I can get fired up about that stuff. <laughs> we'll talk. Listen, Bryce, great wines. I Thank really you. appreciate you Thank stopping you. by. I really think that a lot of people who watch this show, you know, are gonna be inspired by, you know, first of all, thank you what you did for this country. Oh, I think please, I, no, but honestly, no, no, no. that's not thank minor you. leagues. Thank you. Thank you, you know, I was born in Russia. I'm no, very no. aware yeah. about what goes on in a, in a different emotional place than most people. Number two, it's a very entrepreneurial story. You know, it's a <laughs> I always talk about running a marathon instead of a sprint when I talk about yeah. business. You yeah. ran a marathon, 18 yeah. years, no, you know, not profitable. Yeah, there's been 10 more. <laughs> right, you, you, you had like one or, you had like, you had eight years of profitability and 28 years of non-profitability. It's all my life. So you've done pretty well in that little life pocket of looking, being. I know, I'm still looking for money all my life. Question of the day. Okay, first of all, emeritusvineyards.com. Oh, do I love this guy. E-M-E-R. Do I? We're going to link it up. Okay. Oh, we're going to have a link. Don't worry. Oh, 300 of these Vaniacs okay. are joining your mailing okay. list. I can guarantee it just on okay. your charisma. All right. This is a little but bit. But you promised them a t-shirt. I, we, we're, we'll okay. talk. We'll talk. Okay. Yes, okay. I will get them a t-shirt. Okay. This is a little offbeat question because I, I know you've had it many times before. What's your favorite? What's the best wine you ever had? Not your favorite. What's the best wine you ever had? Okay. That's my question of the day. Now, I want to qualify it as this. Don't look at me. Look at them. Okay. Their answer. Here's the qualification. The best, best five or ten of these, I'll post. I'll get them up and give you some publicity. But here's, here's what I mean by the best wine you ever had. Here's the best wine I ever had. A Nouveau Beaujolais. Because who you had it with? I was in Paris. It was Nouveau Day. I was with my wife. There was dancing in the street, chestnuts on the fire. Every table had one. I was in heaven. That's the best wine I ever had. What's your story? Bryce, I'll publish it. That's a that's that's fantastic stuff. You know, I think as people watch this episode and realize we don't know each other as well, you're going to see a whole lot of similarities in our beliefs. I talk about this all the time. Okay. It's the people you're with Absolutely. and the event, Absolutely. not the wine in the bottle. Cheers to that, God, my friend. Right. Thanks for being here. Boy, you, fun. with a little bit of me, well, actually, you, well, actually, he's <laughs> changed the wine world. Oh, thank you.